How to be an actor in LA. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Dylan Daniel Mutiaba, and I'm an actor here in the sunny Los Angeles. And today we're going to be talking about what being an actor is and moving here for the first time to Los Angeles, the do's and don'ts, and how to succeed in the business. Some of the things you can find me on are Dog with a Blog on Disney Channel, Call of the Wild with Harrison Ford, Shangri-La Suite with amazing Emily Browning. Some commercials that I've done are Apple, Target, PetSmart, a Wingstop commercial that was a lot of fun and a lot of wings. So, stay tuned. So if you're in university and you see yourself moving to LA or New York or Chicago to, to become an actor, it is all about preparation. You know, those four years that you have in university, wherever that university might be, I think it's beneficial for actors to work with the film students. Uh, most universities have a film and theater program. So if you definitely want to become a film actor or a television actor, I think it's beneficial that you make friends with the students in the film department who are directors, who are writers, and you guys just you know, create short films, and they're always doing film thesis in, in, in their classes. So um, network with these people, make films, and really begin to grow your technique of, of being on set and what it feels like. So much of my experience in university was working with a bunch of friends who were film directors and allowing myself to, to get comfortable with being on set. You know, I learned many things of you know, the gaffer and the grip and how to light up a, a shot and, and the sound guy and how to hit your mark. These are all things that are very prudent for an actor when they step up into an acting scene, say you book a television show, but you have never been on set. It's a very fast paced environment. So to be comfortable in that environment and know how to handle yourself when you are thrown into the big den, you know how to hit your mark, you know how to find your light, you know how to um, play to the camera, and you are just comfortable. So a lot of university got me comfortable with just being on set and you know building my resume with creative people. So when you first move to LA and you are trying to get representation. I think it's a bit of a journey in itself. Um, finding an agent and a manager who is willing to work with you and for you is um, a very complicated process because it's like being in a relationship. You have to both be on the same page. How I went about finding my first agency was through an acting school. Uh, six months in, they had this camp where agents came out and we auditioned for agents and I happened to book my first agent through that. Um, as I went further into the business, I tried to uh, branch out and find new agents and managers. And how I went about that is Google. Yeah, so Google agents and managers around your town and see what agencies and managers pop up. And usually now we live in a very digital age where um, a lot of agencies and, and managers accept online submissions. Um, so it's very easy to just send your headshot and your resume to their um, submission uh, portal. And uh, it's just really a waiting game. You know, you wait to hear back and see if you are a match in their roster. Um, and like I said, it's like dating, you know, agents and managers have a lot of clients. Some are boutique agencies, some are bigger agencies, and they have a list of clients. I say if you're not a match for their agency, they won't get back to you. Um, and sometimes when you are a match and they feel that they are missing a key demographic in their roster, they will reach out to you and say, hey, we'd like you to come in for um, a reading, for an audition for our agency or management company. And um, yeah, you just pretty much go to that first audition uh, with them and see if it's a perfect fit and you're on your way. When I left my first agency, I applied for a lot, a lot of agencies and managers. I probably sent about over 60 email submissions. 
to different agencies and managers. And out of those 60 plus submissions, I would say only maybe 10 or less than that, five, eight got back to me um, where I actually had a sit down and I, I met with the agents and the managers and I, I read scenes for them and talked about possible representation. But it, it really is a very consistent grind of sending your yourself, your material, your reels, your um, headshots, your resume to as many agents and managers out there. It doesn't have to be the big corporations like CAA or WME because obviously those are um, a stepping ladder to, for, for actors. But start off small. Start off with boutique agencies because boutique agencies focus on beginning actors, actors who are just branching into the business and haven't really uh, developed um, a resume. So you boutique agencies focus on getting you actors, co-star roles, guest star roles. So start small, look for boutique agencies around your area and um, just submit. Submit to as many agencies as you can and wait to hear back. Networking in Los Angeles is certainly a tool a tool every actor should have. I think this business is certainly built on who you know and the, the people that you work with. For networking in Los Angeles, when I started auditioning for projects, say Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, I would send emails to the casting assistants and the casting assistants are the people who help the casting directors whenever they are doing an audition for a specific role. And why I would uh, email casting assistants is because casting assistants are very, very hardworking people in this industry. And they uh, very often tend to rise through the ladder of, of this industry to becoming casting directors. And so it's very great uh, for an actor to build that relationship with a casting assistant. You know, I've talked to some actors who sort of dismiss casting assistants because they see them just as assistants. But casting assistants are some of the hardest working people in this industry. And to start off in this industry, building and networking with these people um, will be very beneficial for, for your career because they remember you. So what I did as an actor starting out, my dad always told me, always thank people. Thank people for just their time and their presence. So I would always uh, email a casting assistant and say, thank you, you know, thank you for allowing me to come in and uh, it was very nice meeting you. And those types of just genuine, nice gestures, they remember you by those moments. And um, they say, you know, that's a person I would you know, want to continue to, to bring in and uh, see in further projects. So I say when you first move to Los Angeles and people begin to look for acting classes to be involved in, look around your area for, for specific acting classes. Like again, Google is, is the place to go to. Just type in acting classes. If you're in the LA area, it will come up with a list of acting classes in your area or in your surrounding areas. And what I did when I first moved to LA was I obviously went to the website and saw uh, the descriptions of the type of techniques they were teaching in those specific classes. I would audit many, many acting classes. And I think that is the primary thing for, for actors who are trying to find the right uh, acting class or school for them is to audit as many acting classes as you can. So I audited about six acting classes before I found the one that I felt would allow me to grow as an actor. When you're auditing, you have to pay attention to the sort of energy in the room, uh, the teacher. Are you able to be comfortable with that teacher? Are you able to see how they work with their fellow actors? Is it a type of teacher who pushes you? Um, is it a type of teacher who allows you to become the best actor that you can be? So those were the kind of things I was looking for when I would audit acting classes. And I will also say some, some people also say, do you have to go to acting classes? Do you 
I have to go to acting school. I, I, I say, and this is just for me uh, personally, I think acting school is um, beneficial to the growth of an actor. Um, certainly there is talent, um, and if you have that talent, you continuously want to work on, on, on your talent, your, your, your craft. It's just like a basketball player, you know, you have to continuously be on the court and work on your dribbling skills and your shooting skills. We are our own instrument, you know, so we have to continuously work on our instrument. If that means getting in a class that um, focuses on body movement or a class that focuses on scene analysis or script analysis, those are all things that are beneficial for an actor. I would say that the sort of schools that an actor might be looking at, you know, you don't have to all go to Juilliard or Yale or um, specific universities that focus on acting. There are, you know, conservatories, smaller, smaller schools that focus on acting that are not as expensive. You can find um, just general acting classes in LA. But I, I do believe, you know, as actors, we should continuously be working on our instrument and just, you know, trying to be the best actor that we can be. I would say what I learned very early on is that you never want to try to play to what you think the casting director might want. You never want to try to read a script and, and think about how you're going to book it by doing exactly what they want. In this industry, it's all about in acting, really in general, it's all about bringing yourself to the character. You as yourself are unique. You as yourself are authentic. How you read the character um, in your own perception is going to be different from how 10, 15, 20 other actors read that specific character. So the best way to really be successful in auditions is allow yourself to be seen as an individual. Because when you do that, there is an authenticity that reads. There is a realness, there is a vulnerability. Casting directors um, see and think is interesting. And they know in the back of their mind that you're not, you're not trying to play the character as a very stereotypical, one-dimensional, generic way. You are bringing your own dimension, a three-dimensional character to it. And always, know that when you are going in for an auditions, it doesn't begin the moment that you walk in the door. It really begins the moment that you step into the casting office. They are constantly eyeing you to see the type of person that you are. Acting is not about just being the best actor, it's also about being the best individual that you can be. You know, are you able to work with a, a certain director? Do you have this sort of personality where you are moldable and, and, you know, you have a great working relationship? So know that you are always being watched in this industry and you really should present yourself as a person who is just, you know, great to work with, a great human being and not just present yourself as that, just be that, you know. You know, this industry is about how are you able to work with specific people and how is that working relationship. A few tips for self tapes. These are going to be some quick tips that every casting director loves and every casting tape that is successful always has. Tip number one, always try to find a solid background, a background that is not distracting like this one. Probably a solid wall, usually they like colors like white, blue or gray. Tip number two, make sure the sound is great. So no really, you know, dogs barking in the background or your mom saying, hey, it's dinner time or dogs like that. Make sure the sound is clear and distinct and you can hear yourself. Tip number three, lighting is crucial. Make sure you are well lit, usually a, a light that is coming uh, from the front where you can see yourself clearly. And tip number four, just have fun, you know? Taking the moment and usually for self tapes, hopefully in this post COVID, you are able to get a friend who, uh, you know, has been vaccinated or whatever. And the friend usually stands off to the side of the camera and you're able to 
read with this um, scene partner, this friend. So make sure you have a friend, which you know is very crucial, I, I believe. Have a friend who has some knowledge with acting, who has you know actually um, done a bit of acting, because it's important to have that sort of chemistry where you can relay certain emotions, feelings, and have that person uh, directed back to you. So those are my tips for self tapes. This is a question I actually get a lot. Do you need your SAG card? What is a SAG card versus non-union? SAG is a union where you are protected by an establishment that you know goes over contracts, whether it's commercial, TV, film, you are protected under this union. To be non-union is to be not protected. <laughs> so those are the really the two differences between that. The main question I always get asked is, do you need a SAG card early on in your career? I would say if you're first moving to LA, you know, for the first time, allow yourself to just be non-union for a bit. Non-union has a lot more jobs than SAG does. With non-union, you can book, um, I would say more commercial, more non-union commercial. So allow that as a chance to really um, build your resume and uh, get on set. When you find yourself slowly building a resume and you want to move over to SAG, that is more of a bit of a journey. So when you transition into becoming a SAG actor and getting your SAG card, you will get the chance to work on bigger productions like TV shows on CBS, ABC, films with big directors, um, SAG commercials. So those are the two primary differences. So I would say when you first start out, allow yourself to really build your resume with some non-union work. And when you feel that you have developed who you are as an actor and want to step into the new big dogs, then try to find ways to um, become a SAG actor. And there are very many ways you can go about that. And if you want information on how to become a SAG after actor, we will put a link in the description below that will tell you the process and how to go about becoming a SAG after actor. Oh, let me tell you something about rejection. Rejection is gonna be your best friend when you first move to LA. I have gone through many, many, many years of rejection. It has certainly, um, shaped me into who I am today. Rejection is a part of the business. Everybody's going to be rejected. You know, starting out, it's going to be rejection after rejection after rejection. If you can't handle the rejection, if you feel that the rejection is too much, you probably will have to find a career that's best suited for you. Just know going in, rejection is a part of this business. So how to get over rejection in this business is just know that the audition that you're going out for is not going to be the last. You're going to get multiple auditions after that one. So don't cling to that audition like it is your only hope. Look at it as a way to go into a room or do a self tape for a casting director and build a connection with that casting office. Even if they reject you, you know, they might keep you in mind for something else. I look at every opportunity as a blessing. I'm grateful to audition for every project that comes my way. And if I get rejected for that project or just, you know, don't hear back, I know that that project wasn't right for me. I feel that auditioning is like dating, you know, they call you out on the first date. If there's a vibe, you go on a second date, a call back. If there's another vibe, then you go onto a chemistry read. And in the chemistry read, if it's a perfect fit, then you guys begin dating. But don't look at it as, oh, I'm a failure, I'm not good enough. There's so many things that go into deciding which actor gets the job. And most of the time, it has nothing to do with your talent. It has nothing to do with you as a person. They're just looking for the right actor at that time to fit that exact character. So don't take it personally. Get used to rejection, make it your best friend, and just know you're not alone. Yeah, so when I was in university, I got the amazing experience to go to the Cannes Film Festival. Thanks to my really good friend, Brian McAdams, who made this film, Snaily. 
and I got the chance to go to the Cannes Film Festival. And seriously, it was two weeks of the best time of my life. If you don't know what the Cannes Film Festival is, it is this prestigious film festival in the south of France where you get so many filmmakers, actors, actresses who come together for the two weeks to premiere their films. And so I got to be a part of this festival and for two weeks I got to really throw myself into the, the, the history of, of cinema and what it meant to be an actor, you know, get advice and attend panels from actors, actresses, filmmakers who have been in this business for a very long time. And it just goes to show that even those actors, actresses and filmmakers were all like me at one point, all aspiring to be great at what they do. And that was a moment in, in my life where I said, I wanna come back to the Cannes Film Festival with my own film, whether it's as a filmmaker or as an actor, to be premiered in the Lumiere. And the Lumiere is the big theater where they have the films in competition. So it was a moment in, 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 in my life where I really decided I really want to work hard at my goals, at my career, to really be at the top. And I am still working very hard. And one day, I'll see you there. And I want to give a big shout out to Campus Movie Fest because they are the reason I had such an amazing time in the Cannes Film Festival from attending panels with top filmmakers to meeting people like George Miller to trying to get into Steven Spielberg's <laughs> yacht party. It was truly an amazing experience that has shaped me profoundly. I would say coming into this industry, it is very beneficial for actors to have a really a diverse a resume, things that you can do extra, extra things like horseback riding or surfing or languages like American Sign Language or if you speak Spanish or German or French. Those are all things that benefit you in this business because this business, you know, we are moving into a world of more diversity and people who are able to do more things. You know, if you want to be an actor that does his own stunts, take stunt training, you know. Actors are now getting the chance to do a lot of their own stunts. So if you feel that's something that you want to do, start preparing and really strengthen your, your ability in those things that you think you are um, successful in and, you know, do it with love and passion. If you are in the middle of a state that doesn't have this industry around them, really just focus your creative soul on making short films, you know. We are in a very digital age where everybody has the ability just with an iPhone to create a web series. You know, we've seen people like Issa Rae who started Awkward Black Girl just through a very shaky camera and was able to create this fandom with, with her TV series Insecure. It really just starts with you, you know, the ability to create your own content and put it out there and really just work hard at it. Yeah, you don't have to be in a specific region to, to be an artist. I think artistry lies within you. I think anything is possible if you really put your mind to it. I mean, I was a kid, eight years old, who was born in Uganda, who came to the United States and, you know, now I'm in Hollywood trying to make my dreams happen. So if you really, really believe in yourself and your dreams and your acting talent and just yourself in general, you can achieve anything that you set your mind to. So always believe in yourself and never take no for an answer. I would say for actors, acting is an everyday thing. You know, we are our instrument. You know, acting is about the body, it's about the voice, it's about the movement, the eyes, it's, it's a physicality, it's an essence. I think it's very prudent for actors to continuously sharpen their body, whether it's mind, body, spirit, it's all one vessel. So I would say actors should always, you know, step into their truth, who they are. They should always try to uncover more about life. You know, as actors, we are a reflection of humanity. We are a, a reflection of what it means to live a life. Study people, observe life, observe um, your neighbors, observe people around you, and continuously deepen yourself to um, understand what it means to be a human being.
Thank you guys so much for joining me on this. I hope I answered many of your guys' questions. Just know that this industry is constantly evolving and, and changing. And as an actor, you just have to really believe in yourself and know that you can do anything that you set your mind to. So really just work hard at your craft. Try to be a better person. Lead life with love and passion. And if you guys have any further questions, leave them in the comment section below and I will reply to you and answer them as best as I can. So I just truly want to thank you guys for joining me on this and I wish you all the love, success, hard passion and um, determination that you all need to be successful in this industry and in your career.